I just hope after this video I can actually reduce some head scratching. Let's crack on. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another Mr. Beta White video and this one's a little bit different insofar as this is sort of a bit of an answer to um, the recent uh, Sony SLF30 video that I made. Um, a couple of people have contacted me and there's a comment left as well about um, a bit of confusion about the head disc and what is actually the correct head disc for that machine. Uh, so as you remember I thought it was the wrong one and then I realised it wasn't but I ended up changing it with an SLF1 head disc, uh, which you wouldn't maybe have thought would fit. So I'm going to try and clear some of that up in this video. Um, just run through a few head discs as well. Um, and also uh, just refer you to the uh, PAL site as well. Absolutely brilliant resource for uh, Betamax machines, especially uh, in the UK, but also for Europe as well. Um, US in and European um, Betamax machines uh, do have differences uh, in the way their heads are actually um, uh, used then. Uh, so mainly to do with the hi-fi side of things. Um, but uh, yeah, let's crack on. So the head used on the um, SLF30 is the DSR35 and 35R. Um, and yet the head disc used on an F1 is a DSR-22. And you would think that they are different heads, but they aren't. Um, and slightly, it was a bit of an odd one with that F30 because I really did think there were differences in, in the head discs right the way across Sony machines, just sort of as they developed as um, the technology is advanced, the head disks would be and the chips would be improved, slightly different uh, responses, better response maybe. That's not strictly true. I think the head design did improve. But if we look at this, um, these brand new old stock heads, um, and I'll, I'll put a, a better um, picture up of this. Um, these 35s actually fit F1, F1 UB, 33, C20, F30, uh, C24, C30, 40, um, C40, uh, T20 ME, T30 ME. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a universal head disc for all of those machines. It covers a lot of the basic two head machines from Sony um, and back dates uh, to those. Um, now, interesting thing about this, it quotes the SLHF100. These will not fit an, a European or a, a UK HF100. Or rather, they, they will, but you won't get hi-fi. And that's because the hi-fi version for European markets, for PAL um, markets especially, they have four heads. And um, if you're used to HF100s in, uh, in Europe, it looks bodgy how they put the transformer, um, the rotary transformer for the uh, hi-fi uh, signal on top. It sort of screws in on top of the uh, the head disc, and it has these uh, these standoffs connect to the heads. Um, you would have seen this in in my HF100 video uh, videos actually where I've dealt with heads and slow 1700 as well, where uh, I fit these and you have to put these pegs in. Uh, like on new heads, you actually had to push these pegs in. Um, but this head is not this head. And in fact, let's let's do this. I feel bad almost doing this, but because I'm not going to use these. Um, and uh, these actually 
It's come from Aaron. Thank you very much, Aaron. Really appreciate it. Um, but uh, they are indeed the wrong heads uh, for for a European or UK HF100. Um, so you can see here, and it's obviously the underside of the disc, one signal signal magnets. Um, it's uh, DSR35, and um, you can see that that lines up with these uh, worn heads from an F1, lines up perfectly. Um, if I get them there, you can see they line up perfectly. So these heads will fit an F1, they'll also fit an F30, um, and they will also fit um, that C2030. Okay, so we know that basically single magnets. Um, Colour of the plastic doesn't matter. Um, I was sort of making a big deal out of the plastic being pink and it, it actually doesn't make any difference at all. It's just whatever plastic colour they seem to use, to be honest. Um, the colour of the magnets does matter. Um, if they've got yellow paint on, like that one, I believe this is south facing. If they're black, they're north facing. Um, so polarity of the magnets obviously that will have an effect on how the pickups or pick up depending on how sony arranged them um what signal it gets so might have a signal a, a single pickup but with a north and a south facing um magnet um set so two magnets one north facing one south facing and it will send a different signal which the electronics would pick up or um, it, it might have multiple pickups. So it really depends. Sony really did vary how um, they actually uh, controlled the heads against the video processing uh, side of things for things like perfect stills or better stills. Um, for example, the um, F25 is a little bit of a uh, little bit different insofar as it's a two head machine but it has two magnets you see pink um, and uh, they are actually um, it's exactly the same head disc as the uh, F1 but with the additional magnet you see there it's actually just a blank uh, portion here you've got the additional magnets. Um, not sure why that is. I think it's probably to do with the um, version of electronics used in the F25. The F25 is a very basic machine. And I just think that it's just using a pulse prior to the head switch, if that makes sense. It's not like it's, it's working anything else. Um, so pass... A sensor um, it's probably got one sensor in the drum I don't know well, I suppose we could just check uh, yeah, it would say it's probably got one sensor in the drum and yeah I think it has uh, yes it has so now we can see very easily just between there you can see some white and that is the top of the sensor the magnetic pickup that picks up as these magnets go past and this has one so basically that is picking up the head switch point between these two heads and in some ways that's that's a cheaper way to do it maybe but uh, I'm sure Sony would have had their reasons but uh, to my mind, putting in an extra peg with a bit of plastic and a magnet is cheaper than um, putting in an extra pickup um, and the associated electronics with that. I don't know.
<laughs> that always sound a bit cynical. So, yeah. Um, so the drums, uh, the drums are quite a different kettle of fish. They are pretty much unique um, to the model they come from. So this one, you can see here, uh, this is from a F1. Uh, I think, no, it might actually be a C9. So I've got three lots of cables there. Uh, yes, it is. It's from a C9. Um, you can tell that because we've got two sets of wires there and one set there. So there's a C9 uh, head disc. You can see it's very similar to the F1 head disc. Uh, where are we? F1 here disc. Uh, as far as a magnet goes, but uh, you have the additional uh, wires for the additional head. The, the, these have been relatively wrecked. These heads um, for the the perfect still. So the C9 actually uh, achieves perfect still using um, a three head arrangement. Uh, for the still, it uses two heads, um, but the still head, I believe, is slightly thicker, so enabling more of the tape uh, information to be read, um, thereby eliminating um, tracking lines, uh, which is really quite cool. Uh, wires wise, um, see they're, they're blue and white. And white. Um, that's not the same one. Um, yeah, we've got another one. These are in a state as well. Um, it's also from C9. Um, and they're red, blue on the one side, so the colours don't matter. Um, but what they are does. Yeah, so, um, so this C9 drum. Uh, you see it differs from uh, later drums um, and the upper drum insofar as it has this metal uh, clamp here as well as the allen key um, and a bolt uh, in the back. Later ones just relied on the allen bolt. These are the steadies really. Um, these use a softer alloy. These are harder and you can put one of these on one of these. Um, and just um, you know, take take off these two screws. I never take off all four. I only take off two because this help does help with alignment uh, a little bit uh, of the upper drum. So I never take out all four screws. I just take out these two. Um, that is habit because Toshiba drums. If you take out all four screws, then you've messed up the um, the alignment of the upper drum. So I always take out those two and then take out that, lift it off, and then you can put this one in its place and it just fits with the, the Allen screw. Um, so yes, the drum itself, um, like I say, these are pretty unique to each model, um, but you can work around some of them if you're really, really stuck. Uh, the main differences are obviously the cables. So the cabling, like you can see here, the cabling is quite different on this F30 to this C9, which you would expect, but like completely different. Um, and, you know, from this F25, I think I said F30, this F25 drum uh, is completely different from an F30 drum, even though essentially there's not an awful lot of difference um, in them. Um, and an F1 drum, completely different again. So, uh, let's just strip this down. Um, when you're taking this magnet off, you really don't need to hack around the outside of this. I see so many of these metal assemblies hacked about with. You really don't need to do it. Um, spaces to put your fingers. And this is a 7mm spanner. Um, take off the nut and take off the washer 
Um, the reason I say that is it does get caught in the thread and then you're sort of fighting against that as well as the magnets. Then we should be able to lift this off. Like so, super, We've got a hall effect there. See that one is absolutely covered in glue, so obviously you'd be wanting to clean that glue off. Um, but I'm not too worried about that at this stage. Um, and there is actually, interestingly, the washers there. And, oh gosh. I don't think they dropped off when I pulled that drum off, that motor off. Um, a bit confused why there are two there, because there should only be one. Um, I don't know whether somebody was trying to space this out because it was dragging. Um, maybe they did just fall off. But I find that, I find that difficult to imagine that they did, because they, they were quite jammed in there. Um, and obviously, well, I don't know. So let's just take this off. And the, the, the bottom of the motor is actually uh, usually stuck with some glue. Some are really stuck. This isn't stuck at all. Um, some are really stuck, though. I mean, you can see where the glue has been. So sometimes you have to fight with that. Um, you don't need to get too violent with it. Um, what I tend to do is just give it a little bit of a rock and um, it will come off. It will just break the glue. It's usually quite brittle these days. Okay, so um, this is the board directly onto the bottom of the drum. And you can see here uh, we've got the transformers, transformer connections, um, but we should, if I can find out where it is, yes, so on the C9 we've got one, two, three pickups, these are all pickups. So if you were to try and adapt this, um, and probably the C9 is a really bad one to try and adapt, to be fair, you would have to make sure that your board um, that you were transferring from another drum matched this layout. And I would say in some cases you'd get away with this, um, but in quite a few others you wouldn't. So I would say something like a C30 and an F, 30 you might get away with it but i don't know and ultimately it is these cable lengths and the way the cables are set out that are your main battle but um yeah it's also just where where the pickups are which pickups are used um if the pickups like say it's just using this pickup you could quite easily just chop off the the legs to these pickups put the board on away you go you should be okay um but again as long as the polarity of the magnets are correct but yeah you you could get away with that um and let me know in the comments if you've ever done that i never have i've been lucky i have never sort of had to scavenge um a head drum from a, another machine um which is good um <laughs> but you know, as these things are starting to get more and more scarce, um, that time might come. So it's just just worth noting that it isn't straightforward just to go, oh yeah, I'll change the drum, I'll just re-solder the cables or whatever. It might not be as simple as that at all. You might have to change this whole board. And these things are a bit fiddly as well. You have to be careful, not too much heat. Um, but uh, yeah quite a fun one so yeah the um hall effect hall effect solders in there you don't have to take this board off um i think in previous videos once or twice i have actually taken the board off but then that's when i've changed these caps 
Um, to be fair, I don't think I've ever really known these caps cause problems. Um, but uh, yeah, if if you do need to take them off, then um, unsolder those three there. Two screws, lift the board up, and get to the top then. Get those caps changed if you need to. Um, putting this back together. It's getting getting the, the cable for the drum motor into that clamp. And then we'll just screw this back down. Oop. So another interesting head disc, and a little bit of an exception to the whole thing as well, is the DSR64R. And these, I believe, were only used in the HF150, which is the slimline, um, if you like, slimline version of the um, HF100. And, um, yeah, it... it the head differs insofar as it's not got the standoffs um but otherwise i think it's pretty much an identical head uh let's compare it actually so it isn't so if you look the 150 actually has two magnets uh, i've turned it over i've got the yellow magnets colored magnets and then a standard so um, I think this is the south facing one, north facing. Um, I could be wrong, it might be the other way around, that might be north, that might be south, but either way, it, they, they're different polarities um, on those magnets. So, yeah, you can't even bodge an HF 150 onto a 100 in the uh, UK and Europe. Um, incidentally, reason why... Um, one um, head disc will work in an American HF100 or an NTSC one is because NTSC uses less bandwidth for the video information so the hi-fi information is actually added on top of or in the range for the video um, signal RF signal from the heads so the heads are actually doing the hi-fi uh, audio as well as the video but in PAL, there's not enough bandwidth there to necessitate that. So, yeah, it's separate heads. Um, debatable which is the best way to do it, because in a lot of ways, um, separating them is maybe the way to go. But then, of course, you've got more information going onto the head, onto the tape. So you need better quality tapes. Um, but then in, either way you need better quality tapes because you've got more bandwidth um, for the hi-fi and TV um, uh, picture information with the NTSC version and obviously you've got more stripes of information on the, uh, the PAL version so end of the day i suppose it's it doesn't make much difference you just need better quality um tape so yeah so just quickly before i round up um older machines um so sort of first gen sony machines um this is from uh, c7 um but c6 um c5 um and other similar machines with the thick thicker head disc um, so I think we have one here basically the head disc is the same across all of those machines one signal ma sig single magnets um, this is a brand new head disc um, but where things get more interesting is that whereas um, second generation type heads you don't need any alignment um, on the actual um, positioning of the, the head disc on the drum. Um, it's just literally plonk them on the right way round onto the drum, or away you go. With these, you actually have to set up the eccentricity of the, the, the head disc. So that's the, the actual trueness 
of the head disc as it rotates um, on the in the actual head assembly and if you don't do that you can get like picture wobble um, and oscillation on the uh, on the actual picture and yeah it's just literally because the heads are um, or the drum is actually moving uh, in a non-true manner so that's actually something to bear in mind if you if you're working on these older machines and you want to change the heads um, you are going to need an eccentricity gauge or some way of making sure that those heads are perfectly um, 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 aligned true so uh, you don't get that problem um, now I say these are first generation these are second there are some Sony machines that use this th thicker head disc uh, in this sort of era of second generation. Um, there's a couple of uh, ME machines. Um, and I know the SLO, the Slow 1800 as well, uh, which I think is only NTSC markets. Um, but let me know if there were ever any PAL or CCAM um, variants of that that. Uh, Pro duplicator machine um, that actually had did use a thicker thicker head disc, and the main reason you would want to use a thicker head disc it just adds a bit more stability to the um, to the actual tape transport or tape as it goes through the heads. I mean, you can see here a lot less um, tape is actually in contact with the upper and lower drums because the heads are taking up the majority of the um, of the, the tape path uh, as it goes past the heads and of course they're uh, calibrated in factory so you just get better stability less potential wear on the drum components as well um, and uh, yeah, it's just a better way of doing it, I think. <laughs> um, I mean, the only slight downside is you've got a lot more um, material, actual physical metal material, whizzing around. Um, with these, it's just the head chips. With these, it's the, um, the actual head disc as well. Um, does that make much difference? I don't know. Um, actually quite interesting to, to sort of discuss really um, and obviously you've got a fan on the top this is actually pushing uh, air down through over the top of the heads and it's supposed to create or creates um, a slight air cushion as well um, to aid in tape transports and that is the same on these as well this thing here isn't a dust cover it's actually a fan um, and if I remove this, you will see there is a little bit of patination in the rubber. And that patination is designed to create an airflow. So it just creates very slight airflow, apparently. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, I hope that sort of... Um, clears things up a little bit um, certainly re refer to the PAL site um, it's absolutely a great resource for um, head disc head drum um, ACE head uh, full of raise head all the information's there uh, throughout the pages I'll put a link to it in the description below uh, both to PAL site and also to um, specifically those head drum head disc um, numbers and uh yeah it, don't be confused as well by part numbers and dsr um so uh 6762122 a6762122 is a part number um there's a dsr 35r um dsr 22 like I say, is an F1, but a DSR35R will also fit an F1, but the part number 122 uh, would cover all of these as well. It's it's vague. It is vague. Um, but like I say, PAL site is your friend when it comes to these heads, especially, well, the PAL, CCAM, European machines. Um, so, yeah, 
I will do another video on this at some point. Um, I want to sort of tidy this all up. Um, actually show some visual uh, drums um, layouts with the heads off um, and the heads themselves so you know which drums go in which machines which head discs go in which machines which original head discs can be replaced by other head discs that are newer and yeah um, but that's going to take some time because obviously I've got to build up that resource as I um, work on machines so yeah, hope you enjoyed this one. Hope that cleared up a few things from the F30 um, repair as well. And uh, yeah, see you in another video. Bye for now.